Hey students, in today's lesson, you'll learn all about how to use different helping verbs. These are an essential part of English grammar. What are helping verbs anyway? Helping verbs, also called auxiliary verbs, are verbs that have the grammatical function of helping the main verb of the sentence. So today we'll cover basic helping verbs like do, does, and did, be in all its various forms, have, has, and had, as well as modal helping verbs like can, may, should, must, will, shall, and would. There's a lot of information in today's video, so make sure to download the lesson guide by clicking on the link below and entering your email address. The lesson guide is free, it's a PDF you can download, and I'll be happy to send it to you. We'll begin with basic helping verbs. The first one is do, does, and did. We use a form of the word do to ask questions like do you like ice cream? Where do they live? What time does the bank open? Does Bill have a dog? Did you go to the party? Why did she go home early yesterday? Use do with I, you, we, and they in the present. Use does with he, she, and it in the present. And use did for all subjects in the past. One little advanced tip for you, when we're asking questions in the past with why, where, and how plus did, we often shorten the word did in spoken English. So we would say, why did she go home early yesterday instead of why did she? Where do you buy that t-shirt for where did? How would he finish his homework so fast for how did? What about the negative forms? We use don't, doesn't, and didn't to form negative statements. For example, I don't like ice cream. They don't live in this neighborhood. The bank doesn't open on Saturdays. Bill doesn't have a dog. We didn't go to the party. She didn't have any more work to do, so she went home. Now watch out for the common error of just using no or not. So some English learners say things like, I no like ice cream or I not like ice cream. Those are both incorrect. You need to say, I don't like ice cream. The next helping verb is be. We use a form of the word be to make the present, past, and future continuous tenses. So first, the present continuous, am, is, or are, plus the ing form of the verb. For example, I'm studying English. He's talking on the phone. We're having dinner right now. As you can see, we often make it into the short form. In the past continuous, we have was or were plus the ing form. For example, he was singing in the shower. We were driving home from work. And the future continuous is will be plus the ing form. For example, tomorrow morning, I'll be teaching an English class. Next month, we'll be traveling to Europe. Ted will be speaking at the conference in July. Now note that when you ask a question in the present, past, or future continuous, the word order changes and the helping verb comes before the subject. So the question goes, is he talking on the phone? And the statement is, he is, he's talking on the phone. Were you driving home from work? That's the question. And the statement is, we were driving home from work. One more example, will Ted be speaking at the conference? In the case of the future continuous, we only put will before the subject. And the statement, Ted will be speaking at the conference. Our third and last basic helping verb is have. And we use this in perfect tenses, like the present perfect, we use have with I, you, we, and they, and has with he, she, and it. For example, I've, I have, finished my homework. She has just left the office. Bob and Karen have already spoken to me. Again, in spoken English, we often shorten he has and she has to he's and she's. For example, she's just left the office. He's borrowed my textbook. Those stand for she has and he has. In the past perfect, we use had for all subjects. For example, he said he had bought the tickets. We had hoped to finish early, but we didn't. And I think you'll see the pattern here that in spoken English, we often shorten had to just d. For example, he said he'd bought the tickets. We'd hoped to finish early, but we didn't. 
Oh, we've got the future perfect. We use will have. By this time tomorrow, I will have finished this project. By the time I'm 30, I will have traveled to over a dozen countries. Again, when you ask a question with have, the word order changes and the helping verb comes before the subject. So we ask the question, have you finished your homework? And the statement is, I have finished my homework. Has she left the office? She has just left the office. Have Bob and Karen spoken to you? Bob and Karen have spoken to me. Now that you know how to use those basic helping verbs in English, let's go through the modal helping verbs. Modal helping verbs modify the main verb by expressing necessity or possibility. So we use can and could to express ability and possibility. I can swim. I have the ability to swim. We could go to the movies tonight, meaning it's possible for us to go to the movies tonight. You can't enter the restricted area, meaning it's not possible to enter. He tried to call me, but he couldn't get through, meaning it wasn't possible for him to speak to me. We use may and might to express the idea of maybe. We might go camping this weekend, depending on the weather. That means maybe we will go camping, maybe we won't. I may go to the gym later if I get off from work early. Maybe I will go, maybe I won't. We use should to express a recommendation or suggestion. If your head hurts, you should go to the doctor. He should see that movie. He'd like it. It's a recommendation or a suggestion. Use must to express necessity, something that is required. For example, you must arrive on time for the exam. Otherwise, they won't let you take it. That means it is necessary. It's required for you to arrive on time. Now, in spoken English, it's much more common to use need to, have to, and got to, that's informal, for requirements instead of must. So we could say, you have to arrive on time for the exam. You need to arrive on time for the exam. Or, you gotta, you got to arrive on time for the exam. Gotta is very informal. We typically only use it in spoken English and not so much in writing. We use will and won't to express some certainty about the future. For example, I'll help you write the report. I promise to help you write it in the future. That software won't work. It's not compatible with the computer. It's certain that the software will not work. What about the word shall? Well, shall is similar to will, but it's typically only used in very formal English, so I'm not going to cover it here. Use would to express a hypothetical or imaginary situation. For example, if I were a millionaire, I would give away a lot of my money to charity. Dana would study English if she had more free time. And again, in spoken English, would is often shortened to apostrophe D. If I were a millionaire, I'd give money to charity. Remember that when you ask a question, the word order changes and we put that modal helping verb before the subject. Can you swim? I can swim. Could we go to a movie tonight? Yes, we could. Should I see that movie? You should see that movie. Will you help me? I will help you. What would you do? I would give away a lot of the money. Now you know how to use these important helping verbs. I challenge you to try writing a few of your own sentences and questions with each one. You can review this lesson and see all of those example sentences by downloading that free PDF which is available under the video. And I'd love to help you further inside my advanced English grammar course where we go in depth into many important grammar topics. Most importantly, the course includes quizzes and exercises to help you practice. You can join that course by visiting EspressoEnglish.net.